we come to you this morning. Thanking you, praising you, Lord, for one more opportunity. Lord, you didn't have to, Lord, but you, you use your vessel, Lord. You, you, you call him and you, you, you say you got one more thing to do. One more sermon. One more opportunity. Yeah. Lord, I come as a blessing. Master, as your Holy Spirit looks and touches hearts and minds of men, Lord, I come in the name and the power of the Holy Spirit. That you hide me behind the cross of Jesus Christ this morning. That they don't see me, Lord, they see you. And you prick the more hearts of women and men, Lord. And let them know, Lord, that you're still in the saving business. Lord, we need you more now than we can ever need you before. Strengthen us, Lord. Now, Lord, let the meditations of my heart and the words of our mouth be acceptable in thy sight. For, oh, Lord, you are my strength and my redeemer. For it's in the mighty and powerful name of Jesus Christ, we pray for his sake. Thank God. Amen. Amen. I'm not going to be long this morning or this fifth Sunday. But we do have a word, Brother Sam. Uh, God says that he do have instructions to tell us about this morning. If everyone would please turn, turn to the 16th chapter of Acts. Give honor to God, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, saints and friends. Human sinners, if it be. 16th chapter of Acts, beginning with verse 23. Say amen when you get there and say, Brother Reverend Wright, wait a minute if you don't have it. Wait a minute. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts. New Testament. You got it? And it reads as follows. And when they had laid many stripes upon them, they cast them into prison, charging the jailer to keep them safe charging the jailer to keep them safely, who, having received such a charge, thrust them into the inner prison and made their feet fast in stocks. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God. And the prisoners heard them. And suddenly there was a, earth, a great earthquake, so that the foundation of the prison was shaken. And immediately all the doors was opened, and everyone's bands were loose. And the keeper of the prison, awakened out of his sleep, seeing that the prison doors was open, he threw out his sword and would have killed himself, supposing that the prisoners had fled. But Paul cried with a loud voice, saying, Do thyself no harm, for we are all here. Then he called for a light, and the light sprang in, and came trembling, and fell down before Paul and Silas, and asked them, and they brought him out, and said, Sir, what must I do to be saved? 31, and they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved in thy house. Turn to your neighbor and say, Neighbor, Pray. Reverend Wright needs your prayer, Pray. and your amen. amen. He's going to preach about, preach about. Don't, don't harm yourself. Don't harm yourself. Many a sermons 
have been preached about the prayer meeting that happened in jail. Many speculations have advanced through this whole praying. Who prayed? Who led the prayer? And what song they said? Down through the ages and the pews have been ramshackled by happy listeners who imagined with the preacher the frightening devastation of a God sent earthquake. We have found consolation in the power of God to deliver his own in a midnight situation. We rejoice in the fact that the jailer came saying, what must I do to be saved? Or our faith have been strengthened by the happy ending God provided for his servant. You know it was at midnight. All this happened at midnight. You know people started to go in and close the door. The door, the store, the shed, some of them are. Walmart stay open. But for the most part, anybody that got any sense is at home. But, but when you lay down and, 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 and you take on all the day's thoughts and everything that happened in the course of a day, it ain't nothing nice, Brother Samuel. When I, uh, well, you go and you start to think about tomorrow. What am I going to do about this? What am I going to do about that? And at midnight is when all those, when, when everything comes to the forefront. Midnight is a situation that God wants to work with you. But there is one thing we glide over more often than not. And that's the sermon Paul preached before the church doors was open. It was just nine words. It wasn't a whole bunch of words. It was just nine. The word sermon, the, the, the words of the sermon that bore the burden of the preaching is all about just nine words. Just listen to them. Do thyself no harm. For we all here. Count them. They are all there. Do thyself no harm. For we are all here. What a message. There can be no better sermon preached. In a midnight earthquake. You, you, you know Noah was less than that. The only thing Noah preached about was that it's going to rain. 120 years Noah preached about it's going to rain. But Paul uh, uh, just enhanced it of himself. He said nine words. Do thyself no harm. That's a powerful word right there. Do thyself no harm. How familiar the words sound. These words are not only preaching words, but they're words right out of the, the daily speech. The words that make up of our daily benedictions. Isn't that what friends and loved ones say when inviting one another goodbye? They're reflective of such statements as take care of yourself. Anytime that you get ready to leave home, they say, take care of yourself. The old people always say, be careful, boy. My, my mother-in-law says, uh, keep a look. And, and, and you know what I mean? She, you know what I mean? They all have their way of telling you that uh, the days are short. Be mindful yeah. of what's going on. Keep a look. And I, I had to study that, Brother Sandy, because that must have been a Houston thing, you know. Louisiana, Louisiana said a little bit different. Texas said a little different than Alabama. But the bottom line is take care of yourself. You don't have to go far. You can get, the deacon said it earlier this morning. You can just go right out the side of this building and make a right. Somebody run over you. They're shooting on every corner. They're cutting on every corner. They're doing everything they're big and bad enough to do. Take care of yourself. Be mindful of the times. Because Jesus Christ is on his way back. 
Take care of yourself. Be careful. You hear it every day. Tell us what we say. We say it to our acquaintance and our loved ones. But why do we say be careful? Why is it so 